What's up everybody, Brad here. In this second mini DSP video, we'll go over receiver and pre-pro setup, matching subwoofer volume and time aligning subwoofers using REW and the mini DSP software. Sound good? Then let's go. Now I did mention that this is the second video in my mini DSP tutorial series. If you haven't seen the first video, which covers mini DSP installation and software configuration, I'd highly suggest that you watch that first just to make following this guide much easier. You can check it out through the card above, but I'll also put a link in the description as well as in a pinned comment for easy access. And before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, I post new home theater and gaming related content every single week. If you'd like to show your support for the channel, please consider using my Amazon affiliate links, which you'll find in the description below. You don't even have to buy the item from the link you clicked on. And I do want to give a shout out and thanks to SVS for lending me a second PB2000 Pro subwoofer to help make these videos uh, a bit easier. Check out some of their products linked in the description. With that out of the way, let's dive in and start this guide by adjusting the settings on your receiver or pre-pro. So we're gonna access our receiver settings. I'm on a Denon X2300W, but if you're on a Yamaha or a, an Onkyo or something like that, it's gonna be a little different, but just know what they call room correction because we're gonna wanna disable that. So I'm gonna go here into audio, I'm gonna go down to Odyssey, and then I'm just gonna turn off multi EQ XT. And then I'm gonna back out again. I'm gonna come down to speakers and we wanna change a few things here. Most notably, we wanna change the crossover setting to the max for the front channel. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do all because I have it set up here. But on my receiver, the max is 250 Hertz. Basically, we don't want any information being sent to the front left and right channels. Now, it's not a kind of hard cutoff so some information will be there, but we're not really gonna be focusing on EQing anything above say 110 Hertz. So we're good there. We're gonna back out. We're also gonna go down to base. And again, this is gonna be different on your receiver, but here we want this set to LFE. You'll notice there's LFE plus main. We want this set to LFE. Again, we don't want anything going to the front left and right channels at all in terms of base. And then finally, we wanna come into levels and make sure that our trim level for our subwoofer down on the bottom is set to zero. So that is already set there. You'll hear some little things in the background. Sorry about that. And we're good to go there. And lastly, we wanna make sure that any type of up mixing is disabled. We just want a straight stereo signal here. So if you're on Dolby Surround or any of this other stuff, we wanna make sure it's just stereo. We don't want the receiver doing anything to the signal. We are set up here on our receiver. So you should already have the mini DSP plugged up to the computer if you follow my previous video. If not, go ahead and plug that in. Now we'll also need to set up a U mic one or whatever measurement mic you have so we can actually start taking measurements with that microphone. And then finally, we're gonna also need to plug up an HDMI cable from your laptop or PC to the receiver. And this will allow us to get the test tones through our receiver and through our speakers and everything. Otherwise, we won't get any audio. We also wanna make sure our subs are set up properly for use with the mini DSP. So for that, we don't want any phase or polarity adjustments on the sub. Now on a lot of subs, this will be a physical knob or dial, but here with the SVS PB2000 Pros, we have app control. So for this, I have the PB2000 Pro left selected and phase, as you see, is set to zero. If I hit this little button here, I can go check the right one and that's set to zero as well. So we hit this little button here and we go down to polarity. We wanna make sure this is positive and we go back to the left one and we make sure that one is positive as well. So we're all good to go here for the PB2000 Pros. I've made sure that my PB10 ISD, if it'll focus, come on, is set to zero degrees phase. And also I don't have a polarity adjustment there. So that's good to go there. We're ready to start level matching our subs. Now that we're ready to match our subs with one another, we're gonna go ahead and jump into REW first, just to set some things up and make some changes. That way we won't have to do it later and we can just get right into measuring after we level match anything. And I will be level matching the subwoofers in my home theater. I have tried gain matching in the past and because of my room and my subs maybe, uh, I haven't had much success with that. So if you don't know what gain matching is, it's basically where you pick a spot in the room to measure from. So we have the U mic one set up in the main listening position pointing straight up. And let's say we calibrate the front right subwoofer to 75 decibels. Well, then we take that front right subwoofer out. We take another sub, maybe the left front, 
move it into the same spot that the front right sub was in and calibrate that to 75 decibels. And you keep repeating that until you're done with all your subs and you move those subs into their positions without changing their volume or gain knob. And the basis behind that and the goal for that is to make sure all the subs are producing the same amount of energy in the room. But for whatever reason, I've not had luck with that. Uh, it sounds very, very weird and unbalanced. You could tell that you know, this sub is producing way more bass than that sub. Uh, so I'm just gonna level match. Uh, you know, you can try gain matching if you want to. There, a lot of people are big fans of that. Uh, personally, for me, level matching kind of gets you there anyway. That's just my opinion. You know, I'm an enthusiast, I'm not an expert at this. So definitely give that a try if you don't want to, but let's go ahead and jump into REW. We'll get some things set up and then we'll start calibrating and level matching and time aligning and everything. All right, so we have REW open here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on preferences. And we're going to make sure this is all set up properly. For this, we're going to want to use Java. We don't need ISIO for all right now. That will come in later down the road when I do another video on selecting the best crossovers for all of your other speakers. But for now, Java is fine. For the output device, we want to make sure that the Denon is selected and that for our input device, we are using the UMic 1. And also for the UMic, we want to go over to the Cal files and make sure we have the 90 degree file loaded up here. You'll see three here uh, and that that's fine. We can go ahead and exit out of there. And now to level match, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna kind of take this over here a little bit because we don't want it maximized, that's okay. I'm gonna hit generator and speaker cal, what's what we want right now. You'll notice I have the front left selected for the master volume output. So I forgot to mention it while recording, but the tone generator in REW has a multitude of settings and can be pretty confusing, especially if you're new to using REW. For level matching speakers and subwoofers for this video, make sure that noise is selected on the top bar and that pink random is selected just underneath that. Pink random noise is one of the most common types of noise used for speaker and subwoofer level matching and is why I always use it over something else. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on SPL meter and this is gonna bring up the SPL meter and you also wanna make sure that you have your mini DSP window up as well. We're gonna be on the outputs tab. So what we need to do is we also need to get the overall volume set up on our receiver and that won't change. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this is set to speaker cal. I'm gonna hit play, you're gonna hear test tone, and then I'm gonna make sure that that reads 75 dB on the SPL meter. So let me go ahead and do that. So I already made sure that the front left is reading 75 decibels, and I use the overall volume control on the remote, not the individual trim levels inside the receiver. So basically, I reached uh, 17.5 dB, so that is now on my receiver, and that's not gonna change at all. And what we want is no changes, no fluctuations, because we're gonna be doing a lot of measurements, and we want those to be the same. So now we need to make sure all of our subs individually are reading around the same volume, which is a around 75, 76 dB. There's a little variance in there. And before we do that, if you are having some weird issues with the SPL meter here in REW, make sure that it's set to SPL and make sure that C weighting is selected as well as slow. That's gonna give you the easiest way to read those settings. Otherwise, if it's on fast or on Z weighting, I think sometimes it, it defaults to Z weighting, it's gonna be really kind of difficult to dial things in. So just make sure these settings are correct. So now to calibrate the subs, I've already calibrated the level of the front left sub with the front left off camera. I set the over overall gain in the app to around minus 15, I believe, if you've referenced earlier. And so when I hit play, we should see around the same volume. It might be slightly higher. I tend to do that just so I can cut it down a little bit because we're gonna be applying a lot of EQ and stuff and I'd rather have to cut things more than boost them. So I'm gonna hit play here. All right, and as you can see, you might hear it a little bit in the background, but uh, we're hovering around that 76, 77, 78. So that's a little bit higher, but like I said, I like to do that and then and cut it down later on after I do my EQ if I need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the play button again to stop that. So basically that is our baseline volume that we want the other subs to go by. So basically in order to measure the other subs, we're just gonna mute this one and we'll go to the uh, one on the front right there. We'll unmute it and we'll play that same tone. 
except this time I'm not gonna use the, the app to adjust the volume. I've already had it set to minus 15 or whatever to match the other sub. I'm gonna use this little dial here. If you have to boost this a lot, you may wanna go ahead and adjust the actual gain knob on the other sub. But here we won't need to do that, so you'll see in a moment. I'm gonna hit play and then I'm gonna play around with this until I get it around the same as the other sub. Okay, so as you see, I've reached minus 2.2 on the front right sub. So that's great. We're not bringing the volume down way too much or anything, or we didn't have to boost it at all, which is great. So now we're gonna move on to the third sub, and I'm basically gonna do the same thing that I just did. I'm gonna play the tone, use these little uh, these little up and down arrows here to adjust the volume up and down. And again, if the volume is way too low and I'm having to boost it, I'm gonna go ahead and crank up the overall gain on the sub to match the other one. Okay, so there we go. And on this one, we reached about minus 4.6, which is fine. This is the one right behind my couch, right over here. So that makes sense. It's closer. I've got it at 50% on the, the volume dial, on the gain dial. And yeah, that's fine. So just to kind of go over what we've done so far, we've set up the subs, we set up the AV receiver properly. Uh, we've level matched the subs to with one another so they're all playing the same and now we're ready to start doing our time alignment now this is kind of a time consuming process you'll see in a moment why uh, but this will get you really really nice even bass throughout your home theater and it gets them all the subs even even subs that are different such as you know sealed and ported and subs from different manufacturers all playing nicely together so this is a really, really awesome tool, and I think it's worth, just this alone is worth the price of the Mini DSP. So we're over in REW, we already have that open. We can go ahead and close the SPL meter and the uh, tone generator out, and then we could maximize this because we're gonna be going back and forth. Now what we wanna do first is, what I like to do is unmute everything, and I just wanna do a basic baseline measurement before we do anything, and that way we have something to compare it to and you can really see the results after you're done with not only time alignment but EQ. So to do that, we're just gonna click measure up here in the upper left. And I'm just gonna label this before anything. You can could, you could label it whatever you want, just make sure to label it because that way you, you can follow and you can see what you've done and you're not losing stuff. Down here under range, I'm gonna change this to 250. That way we're only measuring a small amount. We don't need to measure the whole speaker. We're really focusing on the bass here. And then settings for length, 256, that's perfectly fine. And then for output, I'm just gonna leave it on the front left. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start and it'll do a measurement. Okay, so this is our graph here and we can go ahead and just hit 10 to 200, so, you know, not very bad. I do have the three subs of one in the, the, the front left and front right of the room, and then the one right behind here on the uh, behind the couch. So I'm also gonna go ahead and click over into the all SPL tab here and click that 10 to 200 again. And basically what we wanna do is, I'm gonna turn this one off down here because we don't really wanna see this while we're working on it. So now we can start time aligning these subwoofers. So. In order to do that, first, let's go back over into the mini DSP. I'm just gonna make that window a little smaller so you can see here. I'm gonna mute the right and back subs, and I wanna do a measurement of just the left, and then we'll do just the right. And I'll explain in a moment why I'm doing that. So we'll label this front left. Okay, and then we wanna measure the front right as well. So we're gonna mute the left and unmute the right, and we'll call this front right. Okay, so we can see that both subs are right here. We have, you know, one as a corresponding color. So blue is the front left and orange-ish, I don't know how it looks on your screen, will be the front right. And then what we wanna do is we wanna measure again, but this time we wanna turn on both subs and see what we get. Say so both together. Again, you can label these whatever you want. Just make sure it's something that you'll remember and that you'll understand what it is when you look at it. Okay, so we actually do have a, a pretty good response here when we turn both of them on. Now, we have a pretty good overall level, but we do have some areas up here that could use a little work. And so basically what we wanna do is start adding delay to the subwoofer that's closest 
to your listening position. So if you're like me, both subs are around equidistant to the listening position. So you kind of have to play around with this a little bit and figure out which one you need to add delay to. It might be slight, it might not be a lot, and you'll see here uh, that I'll end up with a, a number because I've already done this, obviously. I just wanna walk you through this. Now I know that in my room, I need to add a certain amount of delay to this, but I'm not gonna do that right away. I'll show you what I typically do when I'm, I'm trying to get things dialed in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add a delay to the left sub. And to do that, we're just gonna click on this bottom icon here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and type in two. That's what I normally like to start with and we'll do a measurement and see what we get. Now, what we wanna see is a line better than this. Even if it's slight, we don't wanna see it change, like we don't see it dip down here, and we don't wanna see it, you know, create this massive null. So now that I've added that delay, I'm gonna do a measurement, but I do wanna add real quick that we're not gonna be focusing on that third sub right now. We're only worried about getting the first two subs playing nicely together. Then once we get those dialed in, we're not gonna touch those. Then we'll add the third one, and then we'll go through and do the same process, and then the fourth one. I don't have a fourth one, but you'll, you'll get the idea by then, and you'll be able to do that on your own. So I'm gonna click measure, and then just go ahead and type in left two. All right, so if we look at left two, eh, it's not, I mean, it, it's it's okay, but we're losing a little bit of, actually we're losing, we created this null right here. Let me turn uh, this, this one off both together. So this one's actually worse than the first one, just without any delay. So that's not a good one. Let's try going up to four and see what happens. We're gonna go back over, type in, I'll just, hit this button. Now you can do really fine control, uh, which we won't do right now, but you'll see you can you really get in there. Uh, I'll just type in four, go back, do another measurement, change that to four. Okay, so that one actually, I'm gonna turn these off real quick so you can see. This one looks much better than two for sure. So two we don't need. I'd go ahead and delete that out of here so that way you kind of retain some cleanliness within REW. And then if we turn on both together, you can see we actually got a, a little bit smoother response here. We lost a little bit of output. What we want to do, like let's maybe try going up to six. So we can open up our mini DSP, type in six, do another measurement and we'll leave that on because you know this is the winner right now change that to six and see what happens all right so we actually got a uh, worse response we're starting to lose output so six is a no-go let's try five all right yeah see five has this really nasty null right up here that we don't want so five's a no-go now you can see why this will take a little bit of time because you can literally go in here and really adjust things you know you could try 4.8 you know something like that or 4.75 do whatever you want basically take as much time as you possibly can doing this step because it's only gonna benefit you later down the road. So I know that my final output, because I've already done this, is gonna be 4.2 for my delay on this one. And I'll go ahead and do that measurement here. Okay, and that got us a little bit better response. It's it's like the this one here. I still think it's better than this one here because we have much less variation, even though we lost a little bit of output there, but that's okay. Um, and then we want to make sure, again, that if we turn the front left and right on, we, we want it to be above, at least above this line here, or at least matching it. So we're, we're pretty much there. And again, this is a kind of give and take compromise. Uh, there's no one perfect scenario where you line everything up and it's just so much better, uh, unless you're really lucky but we are gonna be adding a third sub, so let's go ahead and do the same thing there. So what I'm gonna do is, I know that the left four is what we don't need, so we can go ahead and turn both together off and just save this one. We'll rename it to left and right sub. So now we can just treat this as one single subwoofer. So now basically we can do what we just did with the front left and right, except we're not gonna touch those at all. Whatever is in the mini DSP, this is not changing. These two are not changing. We're gonna turn on the third one, and when we turn that on, we wanna make sure that this, that, that measurement with the third one turned on 
is at least here, but we want to see some, some improvements here and that's called positive summation. I'm going to go ahead and measure and we'll just call this back sub because we know they're all together. We're just, cause we're going to be working on the back sub. Let's just call it that. Okay, so this is our before response of just the two together. And then when we turn on that third one, look what happens. We started losing output right around this area, right up here. And we haven't really gained any output, which is not what we want. So we keep the back sub one because we want something to compare it to and we'll see our changes and we'll leave this turned on here. And we'll go over to the mini DSP. We're gonna add a two millisecond delay to the back sub and we'll do a measurement and we'll call this back sub two. Okay, so even with a two millisecond delay, if we look at the, and compare these two, so this is the one with no delay, and then this is the one with two milliseconds, we're already starting to get that output back. So let's keep going. Let's turn that off. We know that two is the winner. We'll leave this on, make sure we get that positive summation that we're looking for. So we'll go over and add, we'll go to four, and we'll do another measurement. We'll label this four. Okay, so we're starting to get a little more output. I say we keep going. We got a, we were losing a little bit here, but that's okay. I think if we push past it, actually we'll see. Uh, I'll go ahead and input what I finally came to after doing all this tweaking here, which is eight. And we'll go over and add eight to this. Sorry, you can't see that. This is in the way here. So I added eight to the back sub because it's obviously closer than the front two. It's gonna need a little more delay. Okay, so here is eight compared to this, which is just no delay on the back sub at all. We don't have as much positive summation, but we do have a lot of, I mean, it's above the other one, which is what we want. You know, it's a little variation down here and there, but that's fine. This is exactly what we want. And this honestly is the best that I have been able to do in my room with these three subs. So. That is all there is to it with time alignment. Now that's going to wrap up this video. I'm currently working on the third video, which will cover how to use REW and the mini DSP to EQ your subwoofer's response, how to make tweaks to that EQ inside of the mini DSP software, and what you should consider if you're going to run something like Odyssey, YPAO, or any other type of room correction. Look for that video next week. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful at all, please give it a thumbs up as it helps this video reach more people. If you have any questions about the stuff covered in this video, leave a comment down below and let me know. I'll try to get to it if I can. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one where I start taking smart pills and come up with an invention where spiders can finally talk with cats. I believe I was having the be effect.